beginning Love me, love me, love me, say you do Ding, 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 ding Let me fly away with you Ding, 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 for my love is like the wind And wild is the wind Oh, wild is the wind You touch me Ding, ding, I hear the sound of mandolins You kiss me dang 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 with your kiss my life begins oh your spring to me all frogs to me don't you know your frog itself Welcome to the C.M. Kozunin Frog Extravaganza. I was trying to sing you the introduction of a great, great Limp Biscuit song. But because I've been recording non-stop about frog diversity for three hours, my throat is kind of fubbajabajab chap now. I, it's really hoarse and I'm drinking chamomile tea after linden tea after coffee and hopefully in a bit my wife's gonna fix me some hot chocolate and we're gonna see the end of this. Can you believe it? Ladies and gentlemen, after nearly eight hours of recording time in six episodes, in the seventh episode, we are finally gonna finish covering all the diversity of frogs on our planet in the world today. So let's dive into it. But before beginning, always remember to consider supporting me on patreon.com at patreon.com slash cmkozeman. And also, please consider donating to Ather Prometheum for her contribution to the intro of this series at buymeacoffee.com slash Prometheum S. We as these weird YouTube creators, everyone kind of needs a little support in this day and age. So any contribution is welcome. So going forward, yeah, we covered the entire diversity of every frog clade on Earth. And finally, we had reached the great Ranoidea group, which contained the swimming regular frogs and their relatives. And then we had ra just reached the Ranidae big group within Ranoidea. And big group sounds like an amateur term, but cladistics means that there's no order to these things anymore. It's just branches and branches. So big group is as any is as good as any other term in existence. So let's go on full screen and finish covering this freaking really big final sprint in the diversity of frog species on Earth. So these guys are <coughs> basically regular frogs that live in our planet today. And then the diversity of the Ranida includes this leg signaling frogs such as Staurois. And here's Staurois parvus. Now we, we saw frogs like this before in the earlier group with the dancing frogs of Madagascar and their streams. Where was it? Where was it? Uh, I think it was mm -mm -mm. here. No, I don't. These are mantellas. Uh, these were all really confusing. Oh man. I can't find that for the life of me, but we saw similar frogs before 
but suffice it to say that there are another group of leg signaling frogs and they are quite distinct such as Stauroys parvus here so let's go on full screen mode and let's really get this down with okay by the way this is the proper group ranidae now now this group includes like the regular pond frogs you might see in your garden if you're in europe or asia or somewhere else it also includes this slightly more archaic looking tree frog like species called anomalops formosus with its nice green mottled coloration but then you have the big genus pelophylax now this was a real enormous mess they used to call them rana but then they split rana into some groups but then they reconsolidated certain eurasian species of rana under pelophylax so now uh, this is like the og big original water frog group in uh, eurasia let us say illustrated here by the cypriot water frog pelophylax cypriensis and there are also many 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 species of them such as pelophylax nigromaculatus the black spotted pond frog and then Pelophylax Kiel esculentus, the edible frog. The French people, with uh, this great appreciation of cuisine, eat frog legs as well. And I haven't tasted them before, but from the picture alone, they look delicious. And as long as the frogs are ethically farmed, I would have no objection to eating them. So, bon appetit. If you've eaten frog dishes, please let me know in the comments how they taste like. Another thing with Pelophylax is that they keep hybridizing like there's no tomorrow and they don't respect any lines in the heads of biologists. So there are many like klepto species, that is to say they are like mules basically. They are hybrids of other two different species and they have unique characteristics of their own. And their genetics frankly must be a bit of a mess. And then you got more exotic looking regular frogs such as Clinotarsus seen here with this amazing red eye color and the bronzy back and the bluish green legs it's just a beautiful customer also distinct with a slightly bigger head than most and then you got frog species like huia which is basically this guy it's noteworthy for its like strange big toe uh, hand thumbs basically that enable it to hold other frogs when mating and then there's this guy, Meristigenis mariatidae, which is a stream living frog. And its tadpoles uh, accordingly have these like suckers at the bottoms of their bodies. But when they metamorphosize, they look like this a kind of skimpy, light built, sort of even tree frog like guy. And then you got this genus called Pulcrana, which means beautiful frog, like a portmanteau of two words. And they're just. Once again, what can I say? They're beautiful. They got like webbed toes as well as suckers and kind of like a almost toad-like skin. So they're like all frogs combined into one. And here is my thank you so much. My hot chocolate. Thank you. My throat is really uh, sore now, but we're going to power through. And then you got Hylarana, which is a slightly tree frog-like species. But still, yeah, you can see that all these guys, they're like these abstractions of this basic pond frog like type into tree frog toad or lightly built skipping forms then you got this genus hydrophylax once again a beautiful little known mountain forest dwelling amphibian and then you got calcorana which has these enormously extended rear legs as look you can see here once again i keep telling there should be a frog game in which you manipulate different sliders for leg length head length color whatever and just create your own frogs and if any of you is a fro game developer please go ahead and make this game it will sell like crazy and there doesn't have to be combat or anything you just make frogs and watch them i mean put them in a terrarium and watch them eat bugs or stuff would be a really really cool game of course if you really go with it you could create these weird fantasy frogs and have them like battle it out in a massive online world like path of titans that dinosaur game but heck I don't like competition and death in computer games. I just like games that enable you to create things and watch them. It's just the way I am. And then here you got the slightly toad-like but still long-footed long glandirana species. And then the odorana species, which is another small piping, like big-eyed form with extremely long feet once again. Like you can see the 
foot is the longest part of the entire leg so that's quite something and then you got the proper genus rana which also contains like basic pond frogs this is rana graeca found in parts of greece rana aurora the golden frog rana tavasensis this is actually a unique form from turkey it is known only from the region of the tavas mountain in western turkey and it's a very local hyper local regional species and it's really a handsome gentleman like a proper turk it even has the suggestion of a mustache and its legs are knobby and long and it's got these extra knobs along its like mid bones or something it's just really beautiful now this genus obviously has like ultra regional species all over the place and it's all kind of academic like are these like subspecies or species also most of them live in europe and asia where there are lots of academicians now one thing academicians do when they don't discover a big theory of nature is that they want to discover new species so there's a kind of career inflation and as a result there are, there's species inflation i mean yes true this for example the tavas frog is probably a unique species of its own but I, it could probably hybridize with any other frog in the region so is that does it make it a real species or a subspecies and why do you need something to be a new species in order to protect it that's like the main semantic question i can never wrap my head around i mean shouldn't it be just ethical not to destroy habitats and kill frogs in the tawas mountain region not and not wait for it to be a new species i don't know but anyways this frog is cool and there are many many unique forms of frogs in, in mainland turkey so if you want to check them out go check them out and then you got this japanese frogs which are odontorana ishikawae and it has been described as the most beautiful frog in japan it's endemic to okinawa i guess and it's just beautiful this like big tree frog like mottled creature then you got the big uh, bullfrogs which are native to america litobites catespianus Ket here seen eating a garter snake a real big burly and eat everything kind of customer and then you got the smaller related american species litobates sylvaticus the forest frog which is just hopping along and then you got also like the rana species litobates is basically like rana for the new world there are many regional frog species that some of them are even extinct like for example there used to be this population or a species or subspecies but they classify it as a new species some authorities do they call it litobates tlaloki now this frog used to inhabit like basically wetland habitats around mexico city and since Mexico City started expanding, it's likely now extinct. So press F to repay your respects. Litobates, Tlaloki. There are also Indian forms, such as Indirana. This is Indirana brachytarsus. They're like regular looking everyday frogs. They're also like these. Oh, wait, we changed families now. So very sorry. So now we also have this Ranixalidae group, which is, yeah, there are Indian frogs and there are these like more regular looking ones and then there are also like some more gnarly and cryptic and camouflage looking ones like Volcarana seen here Volcarana frinoderma so beautiful customer and then you you got the big uh, final big group the shrub, shrub frogs or the bush frogs the enormous group called the Rakoforidae group now these are like more like properly tree frog like versions that descend from these basically pond frog like things they're like big jumpy and they got these bright colors and sucker tipped feet so they're like this entire other radiation of tree frog like things basically and among them we have burger yeah burger now i am really craving a chicken burger now and this name doesn't help unfortunately it does look nothing like a chicken burger it's just this cute flat looking subtly colored gray with orange specklings subtly colored frog that lives in the forest floor and then you got tiny ones of course such as romerus romeri romer my tiny small friend 
who lives in my armpit and comes only at night and is visible only to me. But then you start getting these like really distinct and beautiful and unique forms such as Nyctizalus seen here. And it almost looks like a gecko with that head. And it almost has the hints of a neck, but actually what you would call it a neck is it's kind of like the small of its back basically. And these are the hip bones, but it's just a beautiful, a very exotic looking tree frog. And then you get the really weird ones, such as this, like, I always called it the wet Indian Kush Ganja weed frog, Telodalma corticale. It looks like a moist bag of tobacco or some sort of other, like marijuana, to be honest, but it's actually a perfectly camouflaged tree frog of the Racoforinae subgroup of the Racoforidae family. And these Telodelmas are really beautiful. They're also, like, really sought after by the pet trade which doesn't make things easy for them here is Telodelma sp and then there's even these guys even achieve the dubious honor of mimicking bird shit in order to camouflage themselves this is the Telodelma bibungese frog mimicking a bungae a kind of sh piece of shit and uh, Telodelma albopunctatum also does this but you know if it gets you through the day, hey, who am I to judge? They also look really slick, by the way. Then you got the subtly colored Philautus genus again. So this is like a more, how do you say, normally colored reddish, small forest floor living tree froggy kind of thing. And then you got Kurizalus, which is kind of more tree dwelling. And once again, it looks like moss with golden eyes and this bright green skin. And then there are numerous species of Kurizalus. I mean, all these species, I think these guys too, the Philotus and all that, they got like dozens, if not hundreds of species under, under them. And remember, I'm skipping some genera entirely because I just don't have the time to cover them all. And not much is known about them, but like, these are all Kurizalus enormous diversity in form and color well maybe not so much in form but i like this like with each species you so you see something so new so i was used to seeing green tree frogs but green tree frogs with green eyes now that's something that's a nice color pattern so even if they look very boring and ordinary after actually if you look closely you see something unique in every frog and then you got this guy, which is kind of like more larger and burlier, Grassizalus, another genus with many species under it. Here are some of them. Now, these guys are different from the previous Kurizalus by being like wartier, slightly larger, and in some cases better camouflaged. There's this guy with these bony eyelashes, which I really like. And this guy has a sort of 1950s car finials extending at the back of its leg. So really, really nice, really beautiful diversity of frogs. And these guys almost have this parachute action. And then you got these guys, Mercurana, long-legged tree frog-like guys. And then these guys, Kirikzalus. I think these are uh, Vietnamese species. Really nice, once again. Look at the fringy look the eyeball has. And then you got the enormous variety of Phaelia. Fei Haila frogs and there are many many colors of them and what makes them unique is that all these frogs uh, kind of all these frogs in the Rakoforinae group build foam nests and they hold these like smooth weird orgies in them and everybody kind of puts their contribution let's say all the guys every guy puts their little drop in it and then the female is kind of at the center of their attention like an idol usually quite larger them to, than them too so they all kind of do this like foaming orgy action and it's just like, I mean, I wonder how that feels like, to be honest. And in every species you see this pattern repeated. Sometimes there's one guy per, uh, per lady, but sometimes they do it in groups. And here's another species, Polypedates lecomistax, once again, having a good, good time. And then this is how they actually make their nests. The foam is actually a really durable, intense kind of foam and it kind of dries around the eggs to protect them. So, yeah, I mean, these are these are how these frogs go about it, basically. And then you got the really superbly patterned Polypedates otilophus frogs, which are, 
I just cream of the crop with these zebra stripes and this big angular head really really beautiful and then you even have the flo flying foam nest frogs such as uh, Rakophorus malabaricus from India once again they build these orgiastic foam nests and they also have the flying ability so there yeah and there are many many species of Rakophorus I mean I'm just speed running through them this guy Rakophorus norhayati has this like mottled bluish color really beautiful it's very interesting like is this due to some sort of injury or do they get to do this with this different eye pupil sizes so that's really interesting and here's even the leopard like version Rakophorus pardalis this is also sometimes called a flying frog and then there is Rakophorus arboreus which is kind of like a more solidly built green tree frog like thing but when I see these guys mating, I always wonder how it would be if there was like, if women were like gigantic goddess sized things. Or maybe there was like a third sex of ultra, like basically like demigods. And all the, the men climbed on top of her and they were like rubbing and trying to have a baby. That would be quite something. Some weird chariots of the gods like stuff or Illuminati or reptilian people like. I mean, you can look at these frogs' methods of reproduction and really derive your own weirdly sexual conspiracy theory stuff, basically. What if all these goddesses were real? Uh-huh. And then you got the vampire tree frog, Rakophorus vampirus, notable for its tadpoles that have these fang-like teeth, really gnarly-looking stuff. And these habitually engage in cannibalism. They devour their siblings. And that's how they get to grow that big. And the tadpole also looks kind of sinister as well. And it's very interesting how these like sharp points in the mouth here somehow translate to these. Sh I mean, they're not related, but you kind of see where they're coming from. The aesthetics remain the same, even as the tadpole matures. So there. Ah, ah, unbelievable. We reached the end, everyone. Can you believe it? This is, I mean, for seven videos, nearly more than eight hours, we've been covering frog diversity. And I, there were times I thought it would never end. I mean, it makes my throat sore and my head ache, but you know, it's just what it takes, to be honest, what it takes to be a frog master. And I really hope you enjoyed this series. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you all for supporting this channel. I mean, I get to do these like off the cuff, really weird, completely never seen before spur of the moment videos, all thanks to your kind support on patreon.com slash cmcozeman. And we do have a lot of patrons and thanks to them, you know, I've gotten out of some pretty rough corners recently. So thank you so much for your support. If you support me on Patreon, you get access to never seen before artwork, other creations, you can download download the slideshows you see on my channel so the whole lot so thank you so much and here is our cladistics of patrons so there are a number of you who are extremely generous and you support me with like really quite big uh, amounts of money every month so i group you all i grant you the title giga patronidae the gigantic patrons and i will read your names aloud aloud now and I will co follow them up with a kind of honorific Turkish epithet. I will call you Bereketi Bol ve Daimola. Okay, so let's go. Alexander the Irishman. Bereketi Bol ve Daimola. Daniel Rusis de Melo. Bereketi Bol ve Daimola. Demit Tishin. Bereketi Bol ve Daimola. Ernest French, Bereketi Bol ve Daimola. Finley Elliot, Bereketi Bol ve Daimola. HHHH, Bereketi Bol ve Daimola. Hayden, Bereketi Bol ve Daimola. Hedrigal, Bereketi Bol ve Daimola. Ian Ribeiro, Bereketi Bol ve Daimola. Iban Krut, Bereketi bol ve daimola. Jakub Bobrovics, also a close internet friend. Hello, man. And also, bereketin bol ve daimolsun dostum. Matthew 
Kashverar Kashevarov bereketi bol ve daim ola. And Mike Trainer who can forget Mike? He is the biggest collector of my paintings in the Western Hemisphere. Bereketi bol ve daim ola. And he is a great generous patron under the Giga Patronidae clade as well. And finally, Nicola Gibson, bereketin bol ve daim ola. Thank you all my Giga patrons. Then we got the Magna patrons who contribute more than like basically five to ten dollars per month. And you know, this is a really generous contribution. I, I have to thank you all individually. So there you go. Adam Taxton, Akdemiker, Amy Colette, Anti Tab, Arcane Flam, Ashley, Becca Zubrosia, Bibla Ridion, he's also a good close friend, Brian Morgan, Brock Hantal, Connor Laws Krabs, Corplos, Corey D, Dale Durkin, Damascus, Dr. Dolphin, Burger King, Embrace Becoming, Emily Davis, Emir Nart, Even Boss, Fart Pillow, Godzilla Fan 13, Grace, I Names, Jacob McGuire, Jaden Roussel, Jess Mann, John Travelli, Jonathan D. King, Kenneth, Kevin Shrek, a longtime friend as well. He's going away on an amazing trip to Antarctica this year. So uh, happy safe travels, Kevin. Kevin Shrek. Kyrie Fiskroff. Now this guy is also like an extremely generous patron. His monthly donation is not extremely high, but actually in all time he's one of my top contributors. So bereketi bol ve daim ola for Kyrie Fiskroff as well. And then I did something very silly. I took my contacts off because they were hurting because I think I gave myself the flu reading non-stop and shouting into the microphone. So wait as I put my contacts back on. It was a bit silly of me. Ah, okay. KZ Gerard, LFB, Lane Edwards Brown, Lars, Al Paul, Marcus Cruz, Matilda Duff, Al... Max Amorph, Michael C, Nekos Kam, Pope Hat Wiss, Rania Craig, Rhea Lavi, Rob Wynn, Roman Joseph Schilter, Scolio Scraps, Seth Howard, Stranin Strahingia Karik, Terran Werrick, E.T. Whisperer, Rob Gautier, he also is a, like, we had an interview with him once, He has this amazing channel about basically encounters with entities, let us say, and like look him up. He, he's like a really great guy to talk with. Like I'm, he's one of the people I'm lucky to know. I feel lucky to know. The Ant Man 1108, Thomas Strimpel, also a close internet friend. Thank you, Thomas. Yathintu Ragana, Inaki Dragoiri Goyan. Nice name. Is this a palindrome or an? Anagram? I don't know. Luke Sheehan, Peter Avilian, Roy, Sam Tapes, SS13. So you guys were all my Magna patrons. Thank you so much. You know, this kind of contribution, I know it's not easy to give, but so thank you so, so much. Blip, we also have the Grato Patronida, the patrons I am grateful for. Because he really, I mean, everybody in this list gives a dollar or so. But thank you so much. I never take anything lightly. So even a dollar really makes a whole world of difference to me. So we're going to thank you all individually as well. A7, Ali Eser, Alistair, McKellelan, Altshift X, who has also a great channel. Anders Person, Andrew Broker, Andrew Kawam, Andrew Steiner. I know a lot of Andrews. Angel, the MW, MV, Arn, Atakan Salar, Turkish friend, I think. Avery Shards, Babylon Raptor. Ben Watford, Beware the Coup, really nice channel there as well, thank you man. Bill Johnston, Blair Nicholson, Brock, Byron Ritchie, CR Manjerovic, Captain Caps Lock, I would have shouted but my throat is dying. Carlos, Castavian, Chase J, Sigeus, Cosmic Snail, Darwin Jones, Diana Neff, Ebi Ebi, and Slime, Eralp Karaduman, Eugene, 44, Gib, I love this name, Gregory Pham, Holy Valley, IMGAI, Ike Bones, Jaya Bedala, 
sorry, Gert van Dijk. He's also the author of the amazing Furaha project. And thank you so much, sir. Jack Daniels. Jack Kolodjes. Kolodjes. Jean Klevich. JK, Jan, Jerome Lee, Joe, Josh, Joshua, AC Newman, longtime online friends. We go back like way, way back, like more than almost 20 years, I think, online. Joao, Kayla, Kidney Defender, rem reminding me to get a sip of water. Mm. Corey, Kusu, Lauren Tucker, Litherium. Louis B42, my sentient World War II bomber friend. Luke Bardi, Luis I. Fuentes, Lin Huyan Wu, Maim or Maim, Martin Denvir, Michal Sadowski, Mikin, Mosca Blanca, Nick Whitby, Omer Jan Balandi, Ora Borealis, Parker Schipral, Pascagoulian, maybe named after the weird Pascagoula UFO encounter. Who knows? Pester Jest. Pixie Carousel, Ryan Bix, hello man, Samuel Horowatin, mm. going on with the Grotto Patronida Clade, Sawan the Paul, Scott Butts, Seg Jiway, Scubert Dupe, Smook, Spencer Brinkhurst, Squidlord, Tancock, The Shadow Player, Black Mage 27, The Normal Gecko, Theodor Trone, Thomas Zimmer, Tom Onions, Tony Bologna, W.C. Mason, Wilder Penrose, Will Kettler, Whoop, B. Tarzi, Dark Lord, Nicholas Konradsen, Nicolas Lopez, Orlando Orca, Pliers S, and Tall Green Boy. Thank you all. Now, since I started recording this talk, I actually gained some extra followers, so I'm just going to look them up and thank them also individually i mean so sorry about that let's see oh, papa. and also special thanks once again to atar prometium for their contribution to the inter segment you can also if you feel charitable support them on buymeacoffee.com slash prometium s and then uh, here are some emails well it's really I'm professional, but uh, 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 uh. okay. Joel Kurmi and also Max Paul and Marianne. So these are also our recent friends, especially Marianne is a great uh, glass we try artist. So thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. In the next enormous podcast, your names will be in this list. So if you want to join these clades, thank you all for your support. If you're already supporting me, please show this video to your loud ones and maybe they can support me too. A great thing about these videos is that like if you watch them with a girlfriend or, or a boyfriend, I'm I guarantee you will start making out in by the 15th minute or something. So they're like really nice social lubricants, let us say. So anyways, that was that everyone. This was the Sfrog Extravaganza. And now it's time to say goodbye. Have a nice day. And thanks for staying with me through the end. Now, before going, I want one last thing. If you watched until the end, please, can you type frogs are awesome in the comment section? And then, you know, we will be able to, we will be able to see who has been following me all the way. Okay, that was that. And goodbye. Ciao.